Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today, magsasagot naman tayo ng mga problems involving parallelograms gamit ang mga conditions na na-discuss natin noong nakaraang lesson. Mula doon sa nakaraang lesson, pinag-usapan natin yung mga conditions na kung saan ay pag nasatisfy natin yung at least isa sa anim na conditions na ipinakita natin sa inyo ay uh, makoconsider natin yung ating uh, quadrilaterals ay parallelogram. And for today, ay uh, i-apply natin yung mga conditions na yan para masagutan natin yung ilan sa mga parts ng ating parallelogram. It could be an angle, it could be a uh, the bisector or it could be the sides of your parallelogram at makukuha natin ang sukat ng mga yan gamit yung mga properties na napag-usapan natin noong lesson nung nakaraan. So dito sa problem na ito, meron tayong given parallelogram, so defined na parallelogram yung ating quadrilateral. We need to solve using the systems of linear equations yung mga values ng KM or line segment KM at yung line segment LN by finding, of course, the value of our variable, which is x and y. At mapapansin ninyo, hindi defined yung value ng x and y. So, ibig sabihin nito ay sasagutin natin or hahanapin muna natin yung values ng mga variables na yan para makuha natin yung sukat ng measurement ng ating bisector ng parallelogram natin. So, tingnan natin at himay-himayin natin yung ating parallelogram. At dito, nakikita natin na yung ating diagonal, ay yung KM, yan yung ating first diagonal, at yung ating second diagonal ay yung LM. At mapapansin natin na yung ating uh, diagonals, it bisects yung ating uh, mga um, lines o yung mga diagonals natin. So, ibig sabihin, magkaparehas ang sukat nitong mga linya na ito. So, kung ibig sabihin nito, kung magkaparehas sila ng sukat, pwede na natin i-equate yung ating uh, first bisector na yan at, gawa, at gumawa ng equation tulad nito. So, yung ating equation number 1, we can define it as y plus 10, y plus 10 equals 2x minus x, 2x minus 8. Ito ay dahil dun sa properties ng ating uh, parallelogram na yung ating mga diagonals, it bisects each other which means yung ating length ng ating uh, mga diagonals would be half of the other given yung ating uh, bisector na LN at saka yung ating KM na diagonals na naging bisector na rin dahil nga sa properties ng ating parallelogram. So ito yung ating equation number 1, y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. At yung ating uh, pangalawang uh, diagonal na, na bisect naman ni KM ay equal din sa isa't isa. So yung measurement nila ay pareha. So pwede tayong makabuo ng equation number 2 which is y plus 10 equals <laughs> Siyempre, hindi yan. Yan yung nauna natin. Pero yung pangalawa would be x equals y plus 2. There. x is equal to y plus 2. So, meron tayong dalawang equations. At dahil sa meron tayong dalawang equations, pwede natin gamitin yung uh, elimination method, substitution method, so either of the two, para makuha natin yung values ng x and y. And since yung ating equation number 2, yung ating isa sa mga variables ay isolated na, pwede natin gamitin ngayon yung substitution method sa pag-solve ng ating linear system. So, paano ba natin gagamitin si substitution method? So, si y plus 10 equals 2x minus 8. Ibig sabihin yun, yung ating x variable ay gagawin nating y plus 2. So, yung ating equation will be y plus 10 equals 2. Si x ay magiging expression which is y plus 2 minus 8. So, with that, ang ating x ay magiging y plus 2. So, since y plus 2 na siya, pwede na natin siyang simplify by distributing yung ating uh, expression na 2. So, we'll have y plus 10 equals 2y plus 4 minus 8. And by simplifying it further, we'll have y plus 10 equals 2y minus 
4, 4 minus 8 is equal to negative 4, and by combining like terms and solving for y, makukuha na natin yung ating first variable, which is... Nakuha na natin yan dahil nandito yan sa slide. So y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. Chinage natin yung ating variable x into y plus 2. And sinimplify natin yung ating expression. Kaya by combining like terms, meron tayong y plus 10 is equal to 2y minus 4. So what we can do is we could subtract y on both sides at add 4 on both sides para magkaroon tayo ng 10 equals y minus 4 or 14 is equal to y. So since meron na tayong variable na y, which is 14, ang gagawin naman natin ngayon is kukunin yung other variable. So sulat natin si y is equal to 14. Pwede na natin kunin si x variable by using our equation number 2. At si equation number 2, meron tayong x equals y plus 2. So ibig sabihin, para makuha si x, gawin natin 14 si y. Para yung x variable natin ay 14 plus 2 which is equal to 16. So nakuha na natin yung two variables natin which is x and y. x is equal to four, um, 16 and y is equal to 14. And what we can do here is plug into our equation para makuha natin yung length ng lm at ly. At yun yung gagawin natin sa ating second part ng ating work dahil yan yung first part paghanap ng mga values ng ating mga variables na x, y, dahil mapapansin nyo doon sa ating parallelogram, doon sa diagonals natin, andun yung mga expression, at ibig sabihin ng mga expressions na yan, yan yung mga sukat ng ating mga diagonals. So let's go ahead and linisin natin yung ating slide para mag-focus tayo sa paghanap ng line segment km, at ang line segment km natin would be yung Diagonals na yan, so y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus y ay magiging y plus 10 plus 2x minus 8. Dahil i-add natin yung dalawang expressions ng sukat na yan. At dahil alam na natin si x and y, i-replace natin si y by 14, i-replace natin si x by 16. And by simplifying our expression, meron tayong 14 plus 10 plus 32 minus 8. And by adding them up, nakuha na natin yung line segment KM na diagonal ng ating parallelogram, which is 48 units. Ang kukuni naman natin ngayon is yung ating line segment LN. And to do that, i-add natin ngayon si x at saka si y plus 2. At by replacing x by 16 and y by 14, simplifying our expression 16 plus 14 plus 2, ang ating ln will equal to 32. At yan ngayon yung mga sukat ng ating parallelogram, specifically yung diagonals ng ating parallelogram, using the properties or yung conditions ng ating parallelogram noong nakaraang lesson. So, patuloy natin gamitin yung ating mga properties ng parallelogram para masagutan naman natin itong problem number 2. At sa problem number 2 na to, meron tayong A, B, C, D at yan yung ating name ng ating parallelogram. Kailangan daw natin hanapin yung mga corners or yung angle measurement ni A, B, C, D given yung dalawang information natin. So, mapapansin nyo, wala na naman tayong values ng x. So, kailangan natin siyang hanapin. And to be able to do that, kailangan siyempre natin ng properties ng ating parallelogram. At ano ba ang property dyan sa anim na yan? Ang pwede natin gamitin para makuha natin yung value ng x. And to be able to do that, Pumunta kayo doon sa number 6 at makikita ninyo yung ating condition. One angle is supplementary to both its consecutive angles. At yung ating clue na supplementary ay mahalaga dahil ibig sabihin ng supplementary angles, it means yung sum ng ating mga angles would equal to 180 degrees. Which means yung ating first expression or first equation ay manggagaling sa measurement ng angle A plus the measurement of angle B at since supplementary siya ayon sa condition number 6 it's equal to 180 degrees at since alam natin yung ating mga values ng angle A and angle B given by the expression x plus angle B is equal to 2x Makukuha natin ngayon yung ating values ng x kasi si x plus 2x will equal to 
3x equals 180 degrees. At i-divide natin yung ating expression by 3. So, makukuha natin yung 180 degrees divided by 3. At yan ngayon yung ating value ng x, which is given by x or given by our expression from our word problem and syempre yung conditions ng ating parallelogram by using basic algebra rule dividing x on both sides mapapakikita natin ng x value natin ay equal to 32 degrees at si 32 degrees ngayon ang gagamitin natin para masolve natin yung ating parallelogram so lagay natin dito yung ating munting parallelogram yan Pasensya na sa aking uh, lasing na linya. So, ito yung ating parallelogram. So, nakuha lang natin is yung value ng x, pero hindi pa natin nakuha yung angle measurement ng mga yan. So, to be able to do that, is a substitute natin ngayon si measurement ng angle A. Kasi si measurement ng angle A is equal to x. So, ibig sabihin yan, since x is 32 degrees, yung measurement ng angle A natin is equal to 32 degrees. So, ito ay... 32 degrees at yung ating measurement ng angle B naman, meron tayong expression ni angle B which is twice of X. So to be able to find the measurement of angle B, so angle B is equal to 2 times 32 at yun ngayon yung magiging values ng ating measurement ng angle B at ano ba ang 32 times 2? It's equal to 64, kaya yung ating measurement ng ating angle B would be 64 degrees. So, yan yung uh, dalawang angle. So, hahanapin na lang natin ngayon is yung angle D and angle C dahil nakuha na natin si angle A at si angle B. And to be able to answer that problem, what we're going to do is to use yung ating property ng ating diagonal. At dito, sabi sa number 4, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, which means mahalaga yan dahil hindi na natin kailangan masyado ng computation. Yeah, apply na lang natin yung ating conditions. Ibig sabihin nun, yung opposite angle daw ay congruent. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung angle na to ay kaparehas sa angle measurement ng opposite corner which happens to be angle D at yung ating other corner which is 32 degrees ay kaparehas ng opposite corner niya. So that means makukuha na natin yung angle measurement ni angle C. So using our properties, we'll be able to figure out the values of other corners, which is angle C will be equal to 32 degrees dahil parehas sila ng sukat. At yung measurement naman ni angle D, which is opposite angle ni angle B, would be equal to 64 degrees. At nakuha na natin ngayon yung measurements ng ating apat na angles gamit yung condition or properties ng ating parallelogram. So, yan yung ating problem number 2. At dumako na tayo sa ating problem number 3, which is another parallelogram. And in this case, hahanapin natin ngayon si angle A at si angle C, given that the opposite angles are congruent. So, yung angle D at angle B ay congruent. So, ibig sabihin, equal sila. So, makakabuo na tayo ngayon ng ating equation para makuha natin ngayon yung variable x na uh, mahalagang element para makuha natin yung mga angle measurement natin. So, hanapin na natin si uh, x variable by using our conditions. Ano ba ang conditions na mag apply dyan? Yan ang condition number 4. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So, that means we can equate angle D and angle B. At ano ba si angle D at si angle B? Ang measurement niya ay expression at ang ating value ng angle D ay 87 at ang ating value ng angle B ay x plus 29 degrees. So, by using algebra, Subtract 29 on both sides and we'll be able to find the value of x which is equal to 58 degrees. At since meron na tayong 58 degrees sa values ng x, pwede na natin hanapin ngayon si measurement ng angle B dahil i-replace lang natin si x by 58 degrees at makukuha na natin na si measurement of angle B is equal to 87 degrees. And from here, since alam na natin yung values ng ating opposite angles, we can use the other properties ng ating uh, um, parallelogram para ma-solve yung 
angle A and angle C. And in this case, I'm going to look for the values of angle angle C. And to be able to do that, kailangan ko lang i-add si angle D at si angle C dahil yan yung ating condition number 6 na kung saan yung ating consecutive angles will equal to 180 degrees. So mapapansin nyo, si uh, D at si C ay consecutive angles. So what I will do is add them up, which is equal to 180. Alam natin yung measurement ng angle D is 87. So i-replace natin si D ng 87. And using algebra, makukuha na natin ngayon si measurement ng angle C. And how are we going to do that? We subtract both sides by 87. And we'll be able to find the measurement of angle C, which is equal to 93. So... Pasok na dyan si angle C. So, meron na tayong angle D, angle B, angle C. At ia-apply natin ngayon yung ating property uli, number 4. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, which means kung ano man ang measurement natin kay C, yun din ang measurement natin kay A. Kaya, si measurement of angle A will also be equal to 93 degrees. And by that, meron na tayong A, B, C, D angles using the properties of our parallelogram. So, yan ang halaga na dapat alam natin yung ating mga conditions or properties ng parallelogram because it will help us para makagawa ng equation at makapag-solve ng mga missing variables to complete the measurements that we are looking for sa isang parallelogram. Kaya, sa inyong parallelograms, Ito ang parallelogram para sa inyo sa ating number bender challenge of the day. You need to find the length of AO and length of OC when AO is equal to x plus 40 and OC is equal to 2x plus 18. So tandaan sa paghanap ng ating mga measurements ng parallelogram, you need to know your conditions, you need to know your properties. Do a little bit of algebra and make sure na tama yung inyong mga procedures. And once you're able to find the value of the variable, which is in this case x, is a substitute nyo yan sa ating mga expressions para sa ating clue ng paghanap ng mga length ng mga missing measurements ng ating parallelogram. At yan ang ating lesson for today. So when it comes to geometry, it trains us to be critical thinkers dahil ang challenge ng pagsagot ng mga geometry problems tulad nito ay uh, alamin yung mga conditions at properties. Kumbaga sa totoong buhay or in real life situation, ito yung ating mga batas at ito yung ating mga rules na dapat nating sundan para maging tama ang pupuntahan ng anumang desisyon na gagawin natin sa buhay. Para rin lang geometry lessons na kung saan dapat alam niyo inyong mga conditions and use that conditions so that you'll be able to find the measurement of angles or sides or diagonals that you are looking for in a parallelogram. This is Dr. E teaching you to be critical thinkers and see you again next time. Bye!